Hi, I'm Mark Lubers, Westbred Technical Product Manager for the Central Plains. And if you notice, this wheat field that I'm standing in has a little bit of yellowing to it. After I arrived at the field, I did some investigating, and it appears to me that we have some sort of wheat curl mite transmitted virus, whether that's wheat streak mosaic virus, triticum mosaic virus, or high plains mosaic virus, or we could have a combination of the three. Now, we typically associate these diseases with western wheat producing areas, such as western Kansas, Colorado, or western Nebraska, but we do see them from time to time in central and eastern Kansas, which is where this wheat field is located at. So it doesn't really matter where your farm is at, as long as you have the right set of conditions, uh, we can see these diseases. Now in the eastern wheat producing areas, we see two other mosaic viruses, and those are soil-borne mosaic virus and wheat spindle streak mosaic. And, we, and those are different than wheat curl mite viruses in that they're transmitted by a fungus-like organism found in the soil, and we see those typically in low-lying areas of the field with poor water drainage. And that's not the case with this field. So in this field, we have more severe infection on the edge of the field. And then as we move into the field, the, the wheat plants get healthier and healthier. And that's pretty typical with wheat curl mite transmitted viruses. Now, the only way for us to really know of those five viruses, which one we have, is to send a plant sample off for analysis. And most universities have the capability to distinguish between some or all of those viruses. Okay, so back to wheat curl mites. So under ideal conditions, uh, those mites can complete one generation every seven to 10 days. So if we have temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, every seven to 10 days, we're increasing that mite population. Now, as we get closer to freezing temperatures, uh, that reproduction pretty well stops. So in the case where we're planting early or we have a warm fall or extended warm fall or a mild winter, um, that's really when we see these diseases pop up. Now. As I mentioned earlier, we see this pattern of disease where it's worse on the edge and then it gets better, the wheat plants get healthier as we move in the field. And that's because wheat curl mites solely rely on wind currents for movement. So we start, they start on the edge of the field, they have the cycle of infection reproduction and then they move. And that cycle happens over and over again. And so if we have populations that are high enough or the weather conditions are favorable enough, um, we can see a, a serious amount of disease. And in fact, we can see these viruses spread over for mi miles and miles. Or if we have a lot of volunteer weed in the field we're planting in or in neighboring fields, uh, we can see whole fields getting taken with these viruses. Now, controlling the mite population is definitely one way of controlling the viruses themselves. So wheat curl mites uh, require living plant tissue to survive. And so if you're gonna plant a wheat crop, we wanna make sure that any host plants um, have been sprayed three weeks prior to wheat planting and are definitely, those host plants are dead within two weeks of planting. And that's called breaking the green bridge. So the field I'm standing in, for example, the neighbor to the south has a lot of wheat residue from last year's wheat crop. And I've noticed some patches of dead volunteer wheat that were most likely alive when this field was planted or close to when this field was planted. Now, I often get asked about miticides. Well, miticides are relatively ineffective just based on uh, how wheat curl mites move and the, and the length of time that they, uh, they can infect a uh, wheat field. So let's talk about host plants. Now, now, volunteer wheat is probably the most important host plant, but there are some other grassy species that can harbor wheat curl mites, and those include prozo millet, uh, grain sorghum, uh, we've got some winter annuals such as joiny goat grass or downy brome, and then also, also grassy sandbur um, can act as host for wheat curl mites. Now corn, while it's not a great host, uh, mites can increase their population on corn plants. So if we have an irrigated corn field that's still a little bit green and we're getting close to wheat planting, we're going to want to keep an eye on that. The other option is genetic tolerance. So we do have some wheat varieties that have resistance specific to wheat curl mites. And while those do provide a fair amount of protection, uh, most farmers that are concerned about these viruses um, choose, choose varieties that are specifically tolerant to the, the virus themselves. Now keep in mind, there's, there's some wheat varieties that have genes that target wheat streak mosaic virus specifically, and they may not com provide complete control of the other two viruses, triticum mosaic or high plains mosaic. Now, 
all of the recently released West bred varieties uh, for the Western wheat producing environments have at least intermediate or better tolerance um, to these diseases. And in fact, we have a few Central and Eastern Kansas varieties that also have some tolerance to uh, these mite transmitted viruses. Now, <clears throat> wheat curl mite viruses can be absolutely devastating. And really, you know, just make sure that you're controlling any host plants. Let's break that green bridge prior to planting. Uh, make sure you're not planting too early, and then select the right varieties uh, for your specific farm.